Hello friends, Hal here. Today we're going to talk about music theory. Quailstudios.com, quail-studios.com, and also come over and see us at Patreon. Let's see, music theory, a um, couple of things. I've got some notes there I'm looking at. Reading music, people ask me, do I need to learn how to read music? Well, I use reading music, I mean, I read music every day. Um, I play music from sheet music, I look at music, I'm playing the piano all the time. Uh, sometimes I transcribe things from music to the guitar. Um, I, I use it. I use that tool all the time. I can't comprehend not learning how to read music. I mean, there was a time when I couldn't read as well as I do today. Um, I started reading when I was younger, but I really didn't get good at it until just recently. Um, I've always knew, known how to read music. You know, uh, one of my first music lessons were they kind of taught me how to do that. Um, my philosophy, part of my philosophy, is that don't worry about reading music right at the beginning when you're starting to learn how to play, because learning how to play an instrument is like learning how to learning how to use a language, and so you need to get some kind of a um, you know feel for your instrument first before you start reading um, if you're you know older so go ahead and just play just you know figure it out um, but start reading music at some point but you have to understand that playing music and reading music are two different skills you can do both at the same time but don't get hung up on reading music and thinking you have to do that absolutely um, you don't have to but I recommend it so, we'll talk about reading music some more later. You probably know, if you've been playing the guitar for a while, that there are notes that we tune the strings to. E, A, D, G, B, E, right? Um, the musical notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? There's an E, there's an A, there's a D, there's a G, there's a B, there's an E. I've seen on some forums or on Reddit People say, why do I need to learn scales? You know, what does it have to do with anything? Um, I don't really understand. I couldn't comprehend someone saying that because to me, I've always known that scales are like the definition for whatever key you're in. For instance, we were just teaching Sarah to Heaven. Right, the first chord is A minor. Right, we start out with A minor. And the chorus. So, um, if we're in A minor, we're going to use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, those notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? The A minor chord has an A, an E, an A, a C, and an E. There's a G right there. Going to an E, here's a D chord. Now we have an F sharp going to an F sharp. Right. Now the D chord is actually out of the key of A minor. The F sharp that's in that chord is borrowed from someplace else. Now we do that all the time in English, you know, we'll borrow phrases or, or words from other languages, French, Spanish, German, uh, other languages, whatever. Um, we're always doing that, borrowing things. We do that in, uh, in music too. But a lot of times, um, you know, when you're when you're learning how to play, um, you need to know your notes. You need to know what notes are related to each other so you can figure things out really quickly. It speeds things up. Let's talk really quick about beats. You know, uh, a song... Right? has beats, and you'll see people doing this with their head. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's a beat pattern to just about every song. I mean, like 99.9% .9 of the songs out there have some kind of a beat pattern to it. You need to find your beat pattern. We'll talk about that too. Ear training. Let's talk about ear training really quick. Um, ear training is listening, being able to hear notes, like when you're trying to tune something, um, to hear if a note is higher or lower than another note. 
You know, if I said to you which one of those notes is higher and which one is lower, is that one higher than this one, or is it lower? Being able to figure out which one is higher and lower, that's basically ear training. Um, let's see. Oh, analyzing songs. Uh, we were just talking about uh, Stairway to Heaven. You know the ending of Stairway to Heaven goes like this. Right? The and as we wind on down the road. Our shadows, that's basically an A minor. We've got an A minor chord there, a G chord, and an F chord. Okay? Now in A minor, the notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then the next note is A, that's the scale. So A minor, basically what we're doing is we're doing the chord that's built on the first note of the scale, or what we call the first degree of the scale, A minor. And then we go down to seven, which is the G, G major chord. And then we go down to F, which is the six. And then we go back to G, which is the seven, and back to one. one Seven, six, seven, one, seven, six, seven, one, seven, and that's the whole ending part. In fact, the lead, Jimmy Page's lead, um, that's all underneath the A minor, G, F, G, A minor. It's all over the top of that. So, um, that's a pretty standard chord progression. You're going you're gonna to find that, you know, in songs that are in minor, like um, um, Kansas, Carry On My Wayward Son. And I think Turn the Page might have that too. Uh, Bob Seger. Let's see. You know, I mean, I'm just coming off the top of my head on this. But that's a common one, seven, six, seven, one very common for songs in minor. Okay, well, let's stop there. We'll talk more about music theory later in depth. I just wanted to give you a really quick overview. And uh, thanks for coming along. We'll see you later. Quail-studios.com, quailstudios.com, and Patreon. Quail Studios at uh, Patreon. My name is Hal Stead. You can do a search over there and you'll find me. And you can become a contributor and get special videos, videos quicker, and other kind of perks that we have over there for people who are willing to support these videos and to help us to make them. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you later.